Hey folks, Dr. Vapor here. Today is Thursday, March 4th, 2010. And this morning on the Rachel Ray Show, Rachel had on a medical doctor and they were sitting around talking about health issues in the news. Well, my ears perked up when I heard the subject of banning electronic cigarettes come up. So I hit the record button. Well, before I hit the record button, Rachel was talking about how they were gross and she couldn't understand it and how she didn't even want to touch one. But her guest had some pretty interesting insights, although he made a couple of mistakes along the way, too. Here, watch the clip. It's banning e-cigarettes is the next topic. I didn't even know what to say about this. Cigarettes <laughs> have gone electronic. David. This, I didn't want to touch the thing. This is an e-cigarette. It looks, feels, and tastes like a cigarette, <laughs> um, but it isn't. It, uh, nothing is burning, and the e-cigarette doesn't contain tobacco. It heats a nicotine chemical solution into a vapor. It's like a little cigarette vaporizer. <laughs> <laughs> and still, some states are, are banning the sale or use of this product. But regular cigarettes are still being sold, so is banning e-cigarettes going too far? Is the idea of this that you're still getting nicotine but without... Is yes. this any safer than smoking yes. a cigarette? The idea, the idea behind e-cigarettes is that you are leaving out a lot of the toxic substances that are involved in cigarettes and just getting the nicotine. People smoke because of their nicotine addiction. Correct. So the concept behind an e-cigarette is completely fine. But let's, let's back up for a minute. I want to ban all cigarettes. Yeah. You know, let's ban all cigarettes. You I know, think they're not getting just, close to doing Not just e-cigarettes, yeah. but here's a great example where you have two strong associations that are lobbying the legislature and government to make a deal. The tobacco growers, they obviously don't want e-cigarettes because it's going to cut into their sales. The e-cigarette association, they want, obviously, their cigarettes to be sold uh, online. Here's the issue. The FDA has said be careful because we've done a test and there are some carcinogens, things that cause cancer, and some other toxic chemicals that they found in some of the e-cigarettes. The problem is the FDA based it on a very small study that was not entirely scientific. Uh. Here's my opinion. Don't ban e-cigarettes and also not ban regular cigarettes. If you're going to ban one, ban the other. But the I e agree. That seems fair. That seems fair. I mean, either they're legal or they're not. They're and not. if they are legal, don't ban something that might actually help someone quit. Exactly. Yeah. This could be a step from someone who's... Cigarette smoking to quit is very tough, Rachel. Very tough. I, I have friends that wear the nicotine patches. It's the same idea. Same idea. It's one step away from the actual product. I just think this is mired in political controversy. These two different sides are worried about selling, mm. and the government's in between, and, you know, unfortunately, the consumer is the one who loses out. Now, I know you don't like... I know you think they're icky, but... I mean, the idea is just weird to me. It is that, weird. That, because it's a chemical in here. Like, you know you're putting a big pile of chemicals. I mean, to me, well, if you're going to just pop on a bunch of chemicals, go ahead and have the, the, but they're, but the they're, cigarette. Right, but they're getting rid of a lot of the other toxic chemicals gotcha. that are in there. That's why... And that's I do have friends that swear by the patch. Yes. Like, they've effectively quit smoking because they had the patch. And some swear by this, too, by the way. They say that eventually they, work, they wean themselves off the cigarettes. I have other friends that just carry, like, broken pencils and stuff because they wanted the, that's the, the physical... That's Exactly. It. That's it. And sometimes the oral fixation, too. That's People right. Chew, yeah, so... Anyway, so, so that's I mean, if it is... works for you, you're not offended by it. No. Overall, as a doctor, of course, you would say get rid of all of it. All of it. But, but if, if you're, you're gonna, gonna ban one, okay. ban I think the that's other. That's fair. Okay? I mean, you're very good at this. <laughs> now I had a couple of problems with that segment. Now, first off, you can't blame Rachel Ray for being ignorant about electronic cigarettes. How's she supposed to know? So let's just throw her comments out. They were born of not knowing, and we can forgive those. But let's talk about the physician for a minute. He made a lot of great statements. I do disagree with a couple of them, though. The first one is this one. You have two strong associations that are lobbying the legislature and government to make a deal. Two strong lobbying associations? The Electronic Cigarette Association versus Big Tobacco? Can we get real for just a minute here, folks? The Electronic Cigarette Association, according to their website, is an association of 11 small e-cig producers and vendors who have banded together to try and get some information out that is correct. Most of these vendors that are part of the Electronic Cigarette Association are one-person companies operating out of their home to try and generate some extra income. You can't say them in the same breath with Big Tobacco that has spent 
billions of dollars over the years buying senators and congressmen. It just can't be done. Now, Rachel, I do have to correct you on something. When you picked up the e-cig, you were saying, ooh, it's nicotine in a chemical solution. Who would want to do that? Well, let me just show you what I think of chemical solutions. Into this beaker, I'm going to pour 50 milliliters of one of the most potent solvents known to mankind. This solvent is so potent that it will dissolve most organic material in a matter of minutes. Given enough time, it will even dissolve solid rock. It is used in chemical processes all over the world. It's used in wastewater treatment plants. It's used in the production of nuclear weapons. It was even used by the Nazis at Auschwitz. It's called dihydrogen monoxide. And I just drank 50 milliliters of that chemical. Now, of course, dihydrogen monoxide is water. Just because you can call something a chemical doesn't make it unsafe. Another issue uh, that I have with that is the statement, well, if you're going to ban e-cigarettes, you've got to ban tobacco cigarettes too, because if you're going to ban one, you've got to ban the other. You're living in a fantasy land if you think that's going to happen. First off, the social and economic factors involved with such a ban, especially in the United States of America, would be immeasurable. Also, too, the black market that would be created by a ban on tobacco products would not only rival what happened during the prohibition of alcohol in this country, but would probably exceed it, and we would have criminals running rampant, and there'd be blood in the streets. You think I'm wrong? Take a look at what happened during prohibition. We have to take a look at that and learn from those mistakes. Now, I got a solution for you, Rachel Ray. Both as a physician and an e-cigarette user, I would love to come on your show and tell your audience the incredible health benefits they can receive by switching from a tobacco cigarette to an e-cigarette. And those health benefits are immense. Heck, I'll even do a cooking segment. My shrimp and grits will make you slap your grandma. But seriously, Rachel, you have the ears of millions of people. You have influence over their actions and their thoughts. And with that comes great responsibility. And I think this whole issue of tobacco use versus the electronic cigarette warrants a lot more than just three minutes of hearsay being bantered about. These things are healers. They're lifesavers. I know they saved my life. I recommend them to my patients, and I know a lot of physicians who recommend them to their patients as well. I urge you, have on an expert in electronic cigarettes. Have on former representative Matt Salmon, uh, and he's the head of the Electronic Cigarette Association. I think that would be a great guest on your show. Have on someone who works with this daily and knows what the issues are. I think it would be a great education for your audience, and you might wind up saving a bunch of lives. And we're all about saving a bunch of lives. This is Dr. Vapor. Stay cool. We'll see you on the forums.